I will determine will be fit to govern Pakistan. First of all, the initial question will arise, who am I to determine this? Why can't the people of Pakistan themselves determine? Oh, so what? Disregard how it came into the constitution. Now you are stuck with the language of the constitution. At least I am not persuaded to adopt that approach. I cannot forget the history of Pakistan. And unless you can say they are very beneficial things, we had given public notice in prominent newspapers. Not a single political party, not a single political party in come, has come before us which, will, which has said, leave alone those who are not even in parliament say that this is a good uh, interpretation of the constitution. So we, then we come into, there is another aspect which I consider, there are things which are specifically mentioned. If for instance, for theft, you mention a particular sentence. And if you say for a trafficking of offense or for some other offense, there may be a punishment. But for instance, the legislature forgets to mention for what duration. You can't possibly say, oh, I'll impose the punishment for murder here. There must be some logic, there must be some reasoning. The reasoning is, you destroy Pakistan, that's fine. You can contest elections for five years. But if you make a single mistake in the nomination paper, you're disqualified for life. Now, we are just stuck with the wording of it. Have we lost all logic and sensibilities? I mean, why are we not? Nobody's addressing that. I keep telling, requesting uh, uh, that to be addressed, but we're just bogged down by the 62-1F and the whole of Pakistan because uh, a general decided to impose that has now got us thinking. Leave aside the constitution of Pakistan, we're just stuck with his language. So can we just explain? What I really wanted from you as a constitutional expert was to expand the vi our vision and not restrict it. But and everybody's just working on those particular wordings. How does this mean? What does this mean? What does a court of law mean? Uh, is it a court of plenary jurisdiction? Is it a constitutional court? Yes, those are necessary important questions. But in context, in the order of priority, I would put it at number 10 probably, if there are nine other more important ones. Sorry, I went on a bit too long, but can you focus on that, those aspects? Let me, uh, my lord, that was, uh, in a way, your lordship's observations connect and resonate with the question posed by, lord, by my lord, Mr. Sayyid Mansoor Ali Shah. My lord, how did the qualifications and disqualification as envisaged by the original constitution makers make perfect sense? that if you could disconnect them at a time, they make perfect sense because they dealt with two different subjects. In 1985, under presidential order of 14 of 1985, which we call the revival of constitutional order, there, all these changes came about with a minor change again through the 18th amendment at that time with a whole host of disqualifications and qualifications were added. And when these were added at that time, virtually we lost the plot. And it would be difficult to say that 62 and 63 are now disconnected provisions. They are connected, they have to be read as a whole. Now, in so far as those amendments were concerned, they virtually were envisaging, as observed by one of your lordships in an earlier seven member bench judgment, virtually a society of angels and parliamentarians who were probably even holier than angels to come into parliament. So there was a disconnect with real life, I mean, which reminds one of your lordship's observations, remind one of the quotes of Abraham Lincoln, that it, is, it has been my experience that folks who have no vices have very few virtues. So virtually, introducing a society of people with no vices and few virtues. But my lord, in these qualifications and disqualifications, these very long lists, there is a connection. 
And the connection is that you cannot read Article 62 without looking at Article 63. And even earlier, you could not read Article 62 and 63 without being conscious of the rights of citizens under Article 17 of the Constitution. This court has always been mindful not to disenfranchise people, that the right of people to form and join political parties is there, and a person has a right to contest elections. 62 and 63 both make inroads to an extent under that fundamental right. The inroads were sensible inroads when it came to the original 1973 constitution that we will not allow an insane person to be a member of the parliament, that we will not allow an undischarged insolvent to be a member of parliament. We will not allow a person who is not the citizen of Pakistan or is the citizen of another country to be a member of parliament, that we require that persons should be at least 25 or 30 years of age, being National Assembly or Senate respectively, to be members of parliament. And that none of those make an inroad into Article 17 of the Constitution. So why are we interpreting it in this manner then? And then something has also been said that ordinary legislation is not a substitute for a constitutional amendment. Okay, you bring in a constitutional amendment, we strike it down. So our wisdom is paramount. My Lord. So we can do whatever we want to, not guided by anything other than our own vague ideas of morality. My Lord, and that is the submission that two things you will not find. You will not find a judgment from the common law jurisdiction where by a declaration of the court, because this is not a declaration of parliament, my lord, article 63. And will you concede that the, I mean, this is no disrespect to anyone. Will you concede that the parliamentarians in Pakistan are the best in the world? Are the best in the world? Surely not. I mean, don't be hesitant. No, no, my There's lord. no disrespect no, to anybody. No, no, no. no Does any all. other country, a single country in the world have this test for parliamentarians? My Lord, not that I am aware of. Not the U.S. Constitution. So if we have this test and we don't have the best parliamentarians in the world, that means this is not even a workable law, if, if at all anything else. I mean, it's just words on a piece of paper which I can use for my, my personal projects, I would say. To Tomorrow you are honest, you can be declared dishonest, out, in, it's up to me. I can I'll just write some to, few words of English language to, and that's that. To give an immediate example, the US Supreme Court has a similar requirement, citizen, age, those and are, you can physically yes, yes. check like, yes, like, yes, like, yes, like, no. like we had in the 73 constitution. 